So in this video, I'm going to touch on some common questions about phone integration with BMW. Now, I'm talking about integration without using CarPlay, so I'll go over some stuff that's Android specific and some stuff that's iPhone specific. But I'm not going to go over the entire pairing process of the phone, so if you're struggling with that, I do have a separate video about Bluetooth pairing that I recommend you take a look at. But this video is specifically about features once the phone is paired. So let's take a look at some of those questions. So before I jump in, I want to preface things by mentioning that your phone integration will vary depending on vehicle equipment and vehicle software, as well as your phone and your phone software. One of the things that BMW has put together is a nice tool, which is basically a website you can go to. Uh, I'll list the website here. You'll also see, I'll uh, jump onto the website here with this little screen recording I've done. But you go to the website, you can either plug in the VIN number or do a general inquiry on a vehicle, something within the BMW lineup that you're interested in getting maybe. Uh, also, you can pick the phone that you either have or are interested in getting. And then you can see how those two things should be able to function together. Now there's a listing of a bunch of different features that will or will not work depending on the two options that you pick for vehicle and for phone. So if you're unsure how your current vehicle should work or uh, you know, you're unsure about a future vehicle you're thinking of purchasing, check out the website. It'll give you a good idea of the functionality that you should have. All right, first thing I wanted to go over was changing the device name. So once you pair your phone, you may have noticed in the mobile device listing that it gives it a generic name for your phone and usually it's the model number for Android devices and with an iPhone it's just iPhone but you can change this device name through the settings menu so for an Android device if you go into settings and scroll down to the bottom to where it says about phone and then go to phone name once you click on that obviously plug in the phone name however you want to name it and then hit OK uh, for the iPhone you'll go into settings then scroll down to general and then about and then lastly go to name and then once you're in there just plug in the name however you like to, to name your phone so once you finish doing that and naming the device it's not initially going to show up on the listing on the iDrive so what you'll have to do if you want it to show immediately is you'll have to turn off the Bluetooth and then turn the Bluetooth back on otherwise if you don't go that route it will reconnect with your Bluetooth next time you get in the car and then it will refresh that setting that you've just changed but if you want to do it immediately just make sure to do the Bluetooth uh, toggle it off and then on all right next question I get a lot is uh, regarding the contacts list so when you pair your phone to the BMW it's gonna pull your contacts uh, via the Bluetooth connection so if you want to add or remove contacts from your list on the iDrive just remove them from your phone and it should reflect that in the iDrive as well uh, of course, there's a way that you can store contacts in the vehicle, uh, but strictly talking about phone integration, if you're just using the Bluetooth connection for your contacts list, you can just add or remove through your phone. It'll reflect that on the iDrive. Uh, also, regarding the contacts list, a question I get is if you have a preference on how the names are displayed, whether they be first name first or last name first. So if you go in to your contacts, and then if you hit the option button on the iDrive controller, there's an option that you can scroll down to where you can pick how the names are displayed, whether it be, like I said, first name first or last name first. Now, depending on your iDrive version, it might be slightly different, but it should be within that option screen where you can adjust uh, how the names are displayed. All right, so moving on to text messages. Now, just to reiterate, check out the BMW site plug in your vehicle, plug in your phone, check for compatibility because this is not a feature that's on every single car. So uh, an option that you had to have your vehicle equipped with was enhanced USB and Bluetooth and you might notice this on the window sticker. Um, again, check the website. You can check there too if you don't have the window sticker but uh, with Android phones, when you initially pair the device to the car, a lot of Android phones will have a prompt that asks if it's okay that the BMW have access to the messages. Now, if you deny access, obviously your text messages will not work. So make sure you allow access with that. And if you didn't, a lot of times there's a way that you can go back in the settings and you can adjust that setting. But if you don't know how to do that, I just recommend deleting the device, start new uh, and repair the phone. And then make sure to allow it, you know, the second time around. With iPhones, now if you go 
uh, into the settings, you'll go into the Bluetooth menu. And then on the far right of the BMW, it should be listed on the Bluetooth devices paired. On the far right, there's a lowercase i with the blue circle around it. If you give that a touch, that brings up the Bluetooth settings. Now in the Bluetooth settings, usually the show notifications defaults off. So you just toggle that on and this will enable text messaging in the car. Now, like we mentioned before with the device name, if you want immediate results where you want text messaging to work, you know, right then and there, turn off the Bluetooth, turn it back on. This will refresh the settings and allow you to then receive text messages in the car. Otherwise, next time you get in and connect to the Bluetooth, those refresh settings will take effect. Um, something to note about text messaging too is that you will not get your entire list of conversations that you've had like you would see on your phone. You don't get all those conversations with all the different people displayed on the car. It will only show the text messages that you've received while you've been in the car and connected to the Bluetooth. So note that, that's normal operation. Um, depending on your version of iDrive, you could get different notifications. It might look slightly different. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples of what that would look like in uh, a couple different cars. But uh, one of the things that I've seen some of our clients do, which I think is pretty clever, is if text messaging is important to you, you can set it up as a programmable memory button on those one through eight buttons up on the dash. Uh, if you don't know how to use those, again, I have a separate video for that, but basically highlight something on the screen, long press and hold, it'll store it in there. Uh, that way, anytime you do get a notification, you can give it a press, jumps right to your messages, and you can see who texted you. And just briefly, if your phone and vehicle are compatible for email, the most common misunderstanding I see with this is you have to use the native email application on the device in order for it to work in the car. So uh, you can't use the Gmail app. Uh, that will not integrate with the BMW. Here I have a picture of, this is a Samsung Note 5. Uh, of course, it might look different for newer Samsungs or with a different Android device, it might look different, but setting it up in this native application is gonna be key in order for the feature to work. Now regarding entertainment, BMW apps is a feature that many vehicles have equipped. So what BMW apps is, it's a feature that allows certain third-party apps to actually run and operate on the iDrive screen itself. So this frees up the driver from having to use their handset specifically to operate the application. Um, some vehicles do require a wired connection. Uh, again, depending on the, the model year of the car, the software, the version of the iDrive, um, it would require either the charging cable that comes with the device, or it could require a specialty cable, which we call a Y cable, and this is what it looks like. Uh, you can pick these up through parts still, so if you have a earlier model BMW that does require this connection, uh, they're still available. And a lot of the newer vehicles actually have evolved into a wireless connection. So if you are unsure what that looks like, here's a screenshot real quick of uh, an application that I connected to the BMW just to show you what it looks like when the app is in use by the BMW. Again, you can just click on that little X in the upper corner to close out of the, the application and, and run the app like you normally would. But if you don't know what that screen looks like, it's okay, you can just close out of it. Now, if you're just using Bluetooth to listen to music, um, you do have to make sure that you do have your device selected in order for it to play through the speakers. Now, obviously it seems kind of common sense, but one of the common questions that I've seen people run into with this is if you're trying to run a map application from your phone and you want the directions to play through the speakers. So, um, common example, someone puts a destination in their Google Maps, maybe they have a vehicle that doesn't have a navigation system, but they do have Bluetooth connectivity and they're able to stream the audio to the car speakers. They want the directions, the turn by turn voice instructions to come through the speakers. You have to make sure you have your device selected as the audio source. So once you do that, then the directions will play through the speakers. Uh, this is also a good point to, to note if you are hoping to hear the chime for like your notifications. So you might notice once your phone is connected to the Bluetooth, your notification chime from your cell phone will not make a sound unless your phone is selected as the audio source. So um, 
just keep that in mind because again, that's a common question I've seen people run into. So I also want to mention the Connected app. The, the BMW Connected app can be downloaded from either the Play Store um, or from the Apple Store. But with the Connected app, this is another way your phone can integrate with the vehicle. Now, in order for this application to work, you do have to have an active subscription of remote services. Now, uh, many of the new vehicles will actually come with this as a complimentary term. Um, again, it depends depends on the vehicle, the model year, uh, and such. But uh, a lot of them have a complimentary term for remote services. If you're unsure if you have this, there's a few different ways that you can check. So one is if you go into the iDrive, go in the connected drive menu, and then go to the connected store. In here, it should bring up a list of different services that you're currently subscribed to, uh, or maybe even expired, and you want to subscribe to them. You can do that through the vehicle. Uh, another way that you can check is if you go onto this website, so on this website here, this will be a way that you can access the services associated with your vehicle. Now, for the login credentials, when you first buy a BMW, um, the day of the purchase at a dealership at least, they should be signing you up for what's called BMW Assist and the login credentials are set up that same day, which would get you into this website. So, if you didn't purchase from a dealership, or maybe you did and you just didn't get set up, what you can do is go to the website anyway. You can see that you can actually register directly from the website here. Uh, and then, once you go through the registration pro process, you can actually add a vehicle to your account and, again, manage the services this way. Um, a third way that you can do it, uh, do make sure, again, if you if you did purchase from a dealership um, or you didn't, you, you do need to have this set up the third, to actually do the third way. The third way is actually pressing the SOS button on the interior of the car. So the SOS button connects you to a call center rep who will come on the line and ask how they can help you. If you do get connected to one of the representatives, they will confirm some information to make sure that you are the owner. And if you can't accurately answer the questions, they will not um, disclose any information on the vehicle or any services of, or anything about the car. So if you don't have the services set up, that third option might not be a viable option for you, but uh, if you know you do have it set up, that's just another way that's easier. You just talk to a person directly and they'll tell you, this is when such and such service expires. And one more quick note about the SOS button. If you do press the SOS button, do make sure to wait and talk to the representative that comes on the line because if you press the SOS button and do not respond they will assume the worst and actually send uh, some people to check out you know your wellness your well-being to make sure everything's okay so I have heard of that situation happening before so uh, just do make sure you wait and talk to the representative even if it was accidental or you no longer want to speak with them just tell them that they'll hang up the call uh, and all is well once you figure out if you do have remote services then what this application allows you to do is uh, things like honk the horn, flash the lights, lock the doors, locate the car, send destinations from the phone to the car. So a lot of useful tools that you can do, but the big thing I see people run into with not being able to function this is uh, actually making sure they have an active subscription. So do check on that before you, you try to run the connected app and a bunch of the services associated with it. So the final feature I wanted to mention is voice recognition. Now, voice recognition is up on the steering wheel. There's a button and it might look different, might have a different icon on it depending on the vehicle you have, but here's a couple different options of what it might look like. Now, if you press that button long or you do a quick press, you'll get different functionality. So quick pressing that button, what it will do is bring up the voice command system on a compatible vehicle, of course, uh, it'll bring up the voice command system for the BMW. So if you bring up the voice command system for BMW, you'll notice a graphic that's pretty distinct. Um, here's an example of what it might look like. You'll hear a distinct chime, specifically that the BMW makes. Uh, and then you can prompt it with a voice command. Now if you long press and hold that steering wheel button, what it will do is it'll bring up the voice assistant for a compatible device. Now a common example is Siri. Now, when you do that long press, you'll notice it will play a distinct chime from the device. So, like, for example, again, Siri 
has her own distinct tone that she plays when she becomes active. So just like if you had your hand set out and you operated Siri, you'll hear that same chime play through the speakers. Uh, you'll also notice if you're using the voice assistant from a phone that it will display external device, not only on the iDrive screen, but uh, on the instrument cluster and if equipped, the head-up display. It could display it there. So um, once you can identify which system you're talking to, you want to execute different voice commands for different uh, voice recognition systems. So for the BMW, you'll want to execute BMW functions. And the common example uh, that I see people run into is uh, with the radio. So if you want to change your radio station, you have to talk to the BMW. If you talk to the voice assistant on the phone, they'll have no ability to change the radio. So keep that in mind. Uh, and then another common example is uh, sending a text message. If you want to send a text message, then you'll want to talk to the voice assistant on the phone and tell the phone that you want to send a text. That way you can send a text hands-free. Um, but just noting how you want to execute things, which system to talk to, that helps avoid a lot of confusion when trying to operate uh, the voice command systems in these cars. All right, guys, so that wraps up the video on common questions with phone integration. If I didn't touch on something that you were hoping to find out about, let me know. I'll see if I can't help you out. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video.